Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar on FX trading and backtesting using Quanta Blue Shift. Uh, the agenda for today will be we'll briefly look through the FX markets, its technicalities, and a very brief overview on how you value FX. Uh, then we'll move on to a short introduction to Quanta Blue Shift, which is a strategy development platform from Quant Institute. We'll have a introductory session on how to code and run strategy backtest using this platform. Then we'll move back again to Forex and we'll look into uh, some uh, basic factors in Forex market, uh, factors as in uh, factor investing. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see that how to develop those strategies in Blue Shift Quantra. And then we'll move on to a bit more detailed on the alpha strategies and we'll see a few examples of uh, creating alpha out of uh, FX data. So let's begin. Uh, so to start with, what is Blue Shift? Uh, for few of you uh, maybe already aware of Blue Shift and for those who are not, um, it gives me immense pleasure to announce that all of you participating in this webinar have been given access to this platform. So please do log in and try it out and get yourself familiar if you have not already done so. BlueShift is our systematic trading strategy development platform, including strategy research and strategy backtesting. It has inbuilt financial data sets. Uh, we are having uh, this webinar in particular for Forex, but even apart from Forex, we are covering equities and features across different markets. Also, a very important point to note here is that all the backtesting strategies that you develop here, the intellectual property on those strategies are totally with you. And we are pretty serious about this point. And of course, this is on the cloud, so you don't need to own or run your own heavy infrastructure. You can develop strategies and analyze them on the go wherever you are. Although I do not really recommend using a mobile phone for doing this uh, to get the full uh, use of the platform, it is best used on a full screen desktop. Okay, so we move on. A very brief overview of foreign exchange market. Uh, foreign exchange market is one of the largest, as all of you know. Uh, those who are already familiar with FX, I am sure that you will get uh, a couple of points of uh, thoughts from this webinar. Those who are new to the foreign exchange market, I'm sure that uh, you will get a lot of new concepts in this webinar for the next uh, one hour or so. So it is one of the most liquid market and uh, very, un very much unlike equities, it's a decentralized market uh, through uh, liquidity providers across banks and other financial institutions. It has a daily volume of 5 trillion of which around roughly 300 billion is retail volume. And um, mind that, that retail volume is almost 75% uh, of non-financial volumes. Foreign exchange markets also happen to uh, be the one of the first markets to be automated, although uh, given its uh, OTC nature, the over-the-counter trading nature, uh, it is not as, as at present, not as automated as equity markets, but it's steadily and firmly going to that direction. For those of you who are already familiar with equity markets and uh, develop systematic strategies there, uh, the few things to note here, which is uh, different in FX market. The number one is the higher leverage. Higher leverage is uh, nothing particular to Forex uh, as such, uh, since the volatility of FX in general is uh, usually lower than uh, equity market, you obviously get a higher leverage on margin trading. Also, a very important distinction is uh, that ease with which you can short an FX pair. There is no short squares. Uh, there is no limited quantity of uh, stocks that you can be squeezed against. So whenever you are long a pair, you're effectively buying one and selling other. So even if it's short, it's just the reverse. So there is no short squares. Happy shorting. 
Uh, uh, thirdly, the volatility structure in foreign exchanges uh, marked a different one is about the level of volatilities we've already discussed, uh, which is lower than equities, where more importantly, the high orders like the skews and the smiles, they are very different than equities. So you do not have um, that famous uh, fear gauge of investors kind of volatility smile where it is higher on the downside. It is usually very, very symmetric, except around some announcement where there is a built-in expectation in the market for a directional move. And lastly, um, it is usually uh, assumed that foreign exchange market being dominated by institutions are more efficient than equity market and hence a bit more difficult to develop systematic uh, factors that work for a long time. Uh, which is probably a myth. Uh, there is a link there. Uh, those of you who are interested, you can probably delve deeper into it. We'll move on from there. Uh, the Forex market is uh, usually linked tightly coupled with a few other markets. One is the short-term funding markets, which is uh, the GC repo market or the YS market, uh, depending on whether it's a dollar or euro. Uh, this actually drives the liquidity in the market. If the rates goes up, funding rates goes up, the liquidity usually dry up. And also this determines uh, your overnight rollover cost or the carry uh, costs that you uh, incur. The short-term interest rate market is a strong influencer of the directionality. This is basically captures the central bank reaction function and uh, foreign exchange uh, being, a, uh, being highly driven by macro is obviously uh, very sensitive to that. And finally, uh, the forward and uh, the forward markets and the cross currency swap markets, they also determine the long term dynamics, especially on the funding shortage, consistent funding shortage sides. In case you have any questions, we can uh, take it in the Q&A session. Uh, but for now, we'll move on. So what drives the FX market? As you've seen that. Uh, the major driver of the Forex market, uh, since there is no individual company announcement or any earning release, the major driver are essentially three. One is the macro factors. The macro factors like uh, balance of payments, uh, which obviously uh, uh, give a expectation about the directionality of the underlying uh, Forex pair. And also the rates and inflation. Rates and inflation are probably the biggest driver for foreign exchange market rates, uh, especially for uh, the developed market and inflation, especially for the so-called uh, vulnerable markets. Economic growth is again a strong influencing factor. And of course the fiscal policy is another one, as we have seen that after the last US presidential election uh, uh, about Trump's uh, new fiscal policy that kickstarted a huge dollar layer. On the money flow, corporate flows are uh, quite uh, important uh, as well as uh, bond issuance and money transfers and the res respective hedging flows out of that. Uh, this is usually a uh, this is usually uh, comes in a huge volume handled by the liquidity provider and obviously this uh, impact the prices. Also, we have spillovers from the flows uh, like uh, um, uh, the things that can move an exchange rate like strong equity performance, especially in the emerging markets may push up the FX rate. On the significant events, uh, the sudden political changes, geopolitical development, or especially things like unpegging of a currency that you have seen in 2015 Jan by SNB on the Swiss euro. So those kind of events can impact the FX market significantly and in an unpredictable way. Now, whenever we trade any asset, the natural question to answer that, what is the value of the underlying value of the asset? Uh, there are multiple ways of uh, valuing a foreign exchange pair. There is no uh, standard acceptable valuation methodology like we do have in the case of equities, uh, discounted cash flows or ratio method. There is not as uh, not as such agreed upon method for for an exchange valuation. The standard ones, the purchasing power parity, which basically says that a basket of similar goods should cost across uh, or across globe same, which is uh, not really what you see in practice. Uh, there are other methods like real effective exchange rate, which is the trade weighted. Uh, Trade weighted and probably inflation adjusted, and some other adjustments uh, like Samuelson effect, 
uh, adjustment for exchange rate, which is assumed to be mean reverting. And then there are more advanced method, uh, the fundamental equilibrium exchange rate, which is preferred by uh, big institutions as well as IMF uh, that basically tries to predict the level of effects where it will uh, give rise to a long-term balance of uh, long-term uh, equilibrium of the balance of payments and also another approach of doing the same is what is called behavioral equilibrium exchange rate and this uh, effectively is an econometric model using a vector auto regression of many other economic variables along with the ones that we consider under the FEWER. So these are the econometric models, and there are, of course, other data-driven models that you can develop. So, for example, time series forecasting is uh, equally applicable for a uh, foreign exchange market, especially for the sh short duration, and other data-driven models like uh, nonlinear time series or neural network, especially the STM and similar. So having said that, we'll quickly switch to uh, our short introduction to the BlueShift platform. The BlueShift platform, uh, before we go and uh, get into demonstrations, I'll just like to mention a few points. The first point is the availability of the data. So data set is sourced from FXCM. Uh, we have currently 10 uh, top trading currency pairs, which are listed here. And of course, uh, we also have a basic set of macroeconomic data covering the eight underlying economies, which are the real GDP, not the GDP rate, GDP, and then the YY core inflation rate. Core inflation means exclude, excluding energy and uh, food. And then we have also the short-term and long-term interest rates. Short-term interest rates is typically what is your funding rate, and long-term interest rates is typically what reacts to your inflation expectation. Also, the currencies are modeled as non-funded, leveraged, instrument uh, like you'd have in case of a CFD uh, contract for difference. Uh, and also please note that the leverage, the amount of leverage that is applicable for your type of account, also the currency that your account is denominated in, and also the rollover cost, these are not automatic. So when you are running a backtest, you have to especially uh, account for this explicit, explicitly. So, um, we'll get a uh, we'll get a quick introduction to uh, Blue Shift now. When you log into the Blue Shift platform, uh, the page that's where you land up is a page called Strategies. In case you have already developed some strategies, there will be a list here. A good way to get started with Blue Shift is to go through the tool. So when you do a uh, take tour option, so it basically rides through the available optionality of the user interface. So it starts with the first part of the uh, interface that you see. This is where your code goes, your backtesting logic. The next area on the user interface is about your input to the backtest, uh, which includes the data set that uh, we'll be running the backtest on. For today, it is FXCM minute level data, and then the start and the end and the capital. Next, uh, there is a description tab where you can uh, put some uh, specific metadata about your strategy. They're, they are very useful when you have lots of strategies and you need to sift through them. Then for the new back, the, for the whole full backtest, uh, this is the button that you uh, can launch the full backtest from. We have another option called quick backtest, uh, which is built in into the UI. And finally, you have the help section where you can go and uh, get uh, yourself familiar more with the overall uh, scheme of things and the standard APIs that you have. So starting with this platform, the best way to learn how to how the platform works is try to create a new strategy. So for example, we say that we're trying to create a test strategy and we don't have to start from scratch. We can actually uh, pick a standard strategy template and Boom, we go to the coding page. Now, if you look at this, it gives you a very basic uh, strategy. And if you analyze this strategy, we see that the first is as the standard in Python, uh, the comments about the overall file. 
global level uh, uh, comments. Then we have a few imports. So our first set of imports are from Zipline API. This platform is built on Zipline. If you're already familiar with Zipline, then uh, probably this is not needed. So you can uh, get all the required functions that you'll be using heavily in our program from them. And then we can, of course, import a few uh, very useful uh, Python packages as well. Two, the overall structure here is uh, we have more or less three or four functions that does all the job for us. The first one is called initialize. So this function is called only once only once at the start, at the very start of the backtest. This is the function where we set up all the backtest parameters and our accounting parameters. So for example, we are calling this function to explicitly tell this platform that our account is denominated in dollar. So all the profits and losses will be computed in dollar. Then we are also defining what is our universe of uh, Forex pairs. We have 10, we can choose any one of them from uh, the whole 10. And then also we have something called schedule function. So schedule function is a API call that gives you the option to call a function periodically during the backtest. We'll see about the schedule function later. And that's pretty much it in this um, basic strategies. Uh, we can do a, we, we can get into a bit more uh, details. So for example, uh, we can uh, get back to the strategies and we can uh, start writing the other uh, functions that are uh, probably important. One is called before trading start. This function is called every day at the start of the trading session, so around 8.45 UTC. Then there is another function which is called handle data. That also takes in the same set of arguments. And this function is called in each event loop. So for example, if we choose FXCM minute data, so this function will be called every minute. So to summarize, we have initialized that is called once, we have before trading start that is called only once per day. Then we have handle data, which is called every event loop. That is every minute for our minute data set. And then you also have a function called strategy that has been scheduled before using this API called, called schedule function. And we have specified the rules like the date rules is start of the week and the time rules is 15 minutes from market open. So whatever the market open and the month start is defined in our trading calendar, which is built in, this function strategy will be called. Right. Once we have done this, then we can uh, run a very quick backtest. I'm going to run it for a very short period of time. So for example, I can just run it for uh, August. And uh, for the quick run, we just hit run. There are a few keyboard shortcuts as well available, so you can use them as well. So once you run the uh, quick backtest, it starts streaming the data in real time, and you can see the equity curve and the alpha and the beta and the sharp ratio, and as well as the drawdown, very basic set of uh, statistics uh, in real time. And in case uh, there are some uh, error messages or there are some uh, outputs that you are printing, that will be below the chart. So once this quick run is uh, done, then um, we can also see that how it works differently for a backtest. This backtest gives much more information than just a quick run. So for example, if you choose the same level, uh, same duration, from the 1st of January this year to 10th of August. So whenever I schedule a full backtest, uh, this goes into our backtest tab. So if you switch to backtest tab, we see that it has gone for processing. Once the processing is finished, uh, then we can uh, load 
the different sets of data. There are total four sets of uh, different reports that are generated. The first report is the equity curve, along with many other statistics than we have seen for quick run. The second level is a tier sheet. Uh, what you call tier sheet is a collection of reports uh, that gives you, uh, as I say, that the equity curve when we have many more details like your uh, maximum uh, omega ratios, sortino ratios, Q and kurtosis and stability of time series, et cetera, et cetera. In case of anything is not clear uh, of this terminology, uh, please launch uh, the Q&A. We'll take it up during that time. Uh, for tier sheet, it gives you a set of reports that is very useful. For example, you can see that how your leverage varied from during the backtest, as well as your other parameters, like for example, how your strategy fall varied. We see that it's fluctuated a lot during the start and then it stabilized around uh, 5%. Then we have the return histogram that says that what is the downside and the upside of this strategy. Then we also have the drawdown that says that what has been your maximum drawdown and how it evolved. So getting back from there, so as you have seen that of these three functions, initialize, before trading start, handle data, and the optional function of schedule function, uh, all this takes two parameters except initialize, which only takes one parameter as context. So these two parameters are basically goes like this. So on the first parameter context, that basically storing most of the strategy uh, inputs as well as uh, the PNL calculation, the underlying account, the underlying portfolio, all the information about that. Whereas the data parameter is effectively a portal to the, the database that you have. So whenever you need to access data, you go through the data, par data parameter. Whenever you need to access about your algorithms objects, you call the context parameter. The workflow on the blue shift is we start with initialize, we go through before trading start, then we go through handle data. The other useful API functions, schedule functions you have already seen, then for ordering, we use a function called order target percent that basically says that for a given amount of equity that you have in your portfolio, how you want to allocate that equity for each order. And also for setting up your uh, backtest commissioning and slippage models, you can use functions like set commissions, set slippage, and to set up your account currency, you can use set account currency. The context variable, as I was mentioning, so it has your underlying portfolio, you have an underlying account, it has the underlying trading calendar. You can use the trading calendar to know about the, uh, your uh, start opening time of the market, the closing time of the market, or the how many days passed since you started. From account, you get information like your leverage, your current leverage, net, cross, from portfolio, you can get information like the positions you have right now, the total PNL that you have right now, and also the amount of assets in each of the assets that you have in your position. So, um, for foreign exchange market, uh, we have created a template that will help you to get started. Uh, as you see, that foreign exchange market has some slight. Uh, differences uh, from the other markets. So let me open that template. So this is a standard template that you can start with for almost any kind of strategies that you're doing in foreign exchange market using blue shift. Uh, as we see that the first one starts with the same set of imports from Zipline API. We have also a couple of new imports from uh, finance module in Zipline, which is commission and slippage. That is to set our specific case for foreign exchange. 
We also include uh, importing uh, macro data sets. We are importing GDP inflation, short rates, and long rates. And then we are defining our initialized uh, function. First, we are setting the currency. Then we are setting our parameters for our strategies. These parameters, if you're already familiar with Python, is in the form of a dictionary so that this is available in any part of our strategy. We can easily uh, maintain all the parameters at a central place and access it from anywhere in the strategy. We are also defining the context universe much like before. And we are also adding a schedule function to compute the rollovers. As you know that uh, for FX market, if you have, uh, if you uh, hold overnight positions, you are charged on the funding. Uh, you get paid on long and uh, you pay for the short end. So this function is to compute the rollover. For example, we have a uh, parameter called no overnight position. So if this uh, position is turned true, then every, uh, every day we'll close out our overnight positions during which uh, the rollover is computed. We are also adding uh, set commission and set sleepage. In set commissions, we are uh, having uh, a special type of costing, which is called PIP cost, which is uh, adapted for foreign exchange market that charge you based on spread. This assumes uh, this PIP cost is the all-in cost uh, built into the spread. There is no separate commission. And then we are uh, setting the slippage as zero because as we assume the total cost is already built in here. And then we have called a function called rebalance scheduler. So rebalance scheduler takes this particular parameter from our parameter object and then set up a rebalancing based on what we specify there. So either we can specify monthly or weekly or daily or we can specify the number in terms of minutes. So for example, we can say one 15 minute, one five M, or one hour, one H. So based on that, it will uh, specify the, uh, it will set up the particular rebalancing method, and also it will set up a square of method uh, if the overnight position is uh, set false. So, and then uh, down below, we are redefining, uh, we're defining how we do the square off, how we compute these rollovers, and uh, how we uh, compute some other useful technical indicators. So, maybe you need to modify this in case you're trying to add a new technical indicators that is already not there. To access all the technical indicators, we have imported this package. It's a very standard package across many programming language called TAIB technical analysis library and uh, it has a huge number of built-in uh, technical indicators in case you need to define your own that is possible too no problem so once you have done this setup now what you do in handle data is that uh, in case we have scheduled functions beyond one day so for example weekly and monthly we don't need to call handle data at all Otherwise, uh, we check periodically whether it is matching our trading frequency. And if it does, then we call this function called rebalance. And rebalance functions basically uh, define the way we should trade. So here, simply rebalance uh, creates a equal weighted portfolio, compute that uh, equal weights, and put a API call of order target percent with that weight. And we are done. So this is a base template that we can start with. Uh, for example, if you want to run it uh, again, I'll uh, run it for a very short period of time and see how it works. Uh, mind you, this is not a uh, strategy as such. This is just a template. So it will be very, very unimpressive, I'm guessing. It is not a uh, um, mighty impressive strategy. It is uh, just a template.
in case you are um, in case you want to cancel a uh, backtest run you can always hit cancel when when the run is in progress this button will turn into cancel and you can hit it and uh, your quick backtest will be canceled it will be reset and you can uh, start on developing further now going back uh, so this is a very uh, very basic uh, way of uh, start getting started with uh, fx strategies so first we set up our template. We add uh, the uh, important functions in the initialize. We schedule a rebalancer. Then we add the supporting functions like um, the technical analysis functions and a few, a few like square off and get portfolio details, which are all there in the strategy. In case you are looking for the source code, uh, these source codes are available in GitHub and we'll share the URL at the end of the presentation. And uh, then we define uh, a rebalancing method, and uh, then we just define the main strategy, which is, which is called our uh, the rebalance. Yeah. So that's pretty much it uh, with this template. Now, uh, systematic strategies in FX uh, is uh, mostly about finding factors and exploiting those factors systematically. These factors can be either risk factors, that is, uh, they are uh, just a compensation for the risk you are taking. For example, factors like carry or momentum or valuation, or it can be pure alpha. In that case, of course, you have done your research and you have developed your alpha and congratulations. So for the Risk factors. Uh, these are the four basic risk factors that you have in AFX. Uh, the first one is called value. The basic thing is about ranking all the currencies in your universe in terms of the valuation. Uh, we have already seen how, very briefly how to do this valuation. And then uh, purchasing, the va uh, purchasing the currencies which are cheaper and uh, selling the currencies which are um, overvalued. Then, of course, we have momentum. Uh, momentum is a very common risk factor across asset classes. Uh, the difference in FX is that in most of the cases for FX, the momentum that is usually treated as a factor is a time series momentum. Uh, whereas if you're already familiar with equities, then uh, typically the momentum factor in equities means uh, a cross-sectional momentum. Uh, the difference between time series and cross-sectional, in case you do not know, so in case of cross-sectional, we rank the past returns, the recent past returns of all the uh, securities that you're interested in, and then we uh, rank them, and then we go long on the top and short on the bottom, irrespective of their signs, whether they're in positive momentum or negative momentum. If they're in bottom, we short them. Whereas in time series, the long and short depends on the sign. We still rank them, but we short only if the momentum is negative. So time series may not always be balanced in terms of your market exposure. Uh, Cross-sectional is by design uh, market neutral. The third and the most important perhaps and uh, probably the most popular as well uh, factor for fx is the carry strategy carry strategy simply exploits the fact that not all uh, all the currencies in a fx pair pay the same amount of interest rate so if you buy a currency where against another where the currency you are long pays a higher interest versus the currency you are short then you from your overnight deposit, you gain more in terms of interest that you earn than the interest you pay. And that net effect accrues to your PL. So this is in, in short what carry trade is. And of course, uh, it is not a free lunch as um, those of you are already familiar know. So typically the currency pairs for which we see a very high degree of carry are also the currency pairs which are usually more volatile with uh, significantly higher downside risk. So the carry strategy works in a similar fashion. We rank and then we go long on the top, go short on the bottom. Defensive is a strategy which basically uh, hypothesizes that uh, low risk currencies actually are actually earns more than the uh, high risk currencies when you adjust for uh, risk. So risk, uh, high risk currencies are actually lower in risk adjusted returns. 
So let's see that how we can create a carry strategy on uh, blue shift. So again, we go back. This is an example of carry strategy. You must be already familiar with this, uh, the coding window now. Uh, whatever you see here are exactly the same that you have seen in the template. We haven't changed anything. All you have done is we have defined a new function called signal function carry and also incorporated this function in the rebalance function that you have seen before. Before the rebalance function was simply uh, dividing the weights uh, among the number of instruments that you're trading in your universe. Now, instead of that, it is basically calling the signal function to compute the weights and taking that weights to send orders out. So what is this weight function? So this weight function is actually for each pairs in our universe computing the rates differential, which is the difference between the rates that you earn and the rates that you pay. And then we are sorting them and you are then taking long position for the top n numbers, short position for the bottom n numbers, and zero for others. So that's all is uh, getting done here. So now if you look at the uh, backtest, we already ran some backtest here. Uh, so probably I can uh, show you the backtest directly. Uh, if we Uh, so this backtest loading time is dependent on how uh, intensive your transaction has been. If you have many more transactions, then uh, it takes um, uh, that much time to load. So here we see that this strategy uh, didn't perform uh, very good during uh, 2015. As we've seen that 2015 was not a very good time for carry strategies. Uh, we had that uh, hiccups in the uh, yuan valuation followed by some uh, big crash in SPX. Usually carry strategy is a risk on strategy. So in a risk on environment, it will perform great. In a risk off environment, it will take a hit. So this is the basic way we can uh, code a carry strategy on blue shift. Uh, whereas if you are talking about the other factors that you have seen like value and momentum, they are also very similar. So for example, if you look at the momentum factor, all we see that instead of um, the signal function momentum uh, carry, we have a new function called signal function momentum. And we are doing exactly the same thing, but instead of ranking based on the race differential, we are ranking based on the recent performance. And again, based on the performance, we are going long on the top, top in, short on the bottom end and uh, zero for others. And exactly the rebalance function doing the same is calling the signal function momentum to decide the weights. And once we got the weights here, it's calling that um, uh, API to send out the orders. And uh, if you see the back test, uh, it's not mighty impressive. Uh, it's got a cumulative return of 6%, around 0.22 sharp. Uh, these are beta strategies, so we don't expect a very high sharp to start with. And similarly, we can do a value strategy as well. Uh, those of you who are wondering how you're valuing, so this valuation method, you can use a multiple valuation method. Uh, the particular valuation method that we are using here is based on purchase power parity. So we basically use the inflation uh, that we have. And uh, based on that inflation, we are computing that uh, the expected inflation versus the actual realized inflation is a differential. Based on that differential, we are sorting. And again, uh, based on that sorted list, we are going long the top, going short the bottom, and zero on the middle. And it is exactly working the same manner. So as you see that since we started with the template, for developing different strategies, the effort we are uh, actually spending is minimal. We are just defining the particular signal function that you want to implement and calling that signal function in an appropriate area. And um, then the question comes, what if I do not want a particular signal? So what if I want to combine uh, many signals together? Is that possible? The answer is yes, why not? So for example, uh, this 
strategy is called uh, factor basket strategy. This a uh, strategy that in, uh, allocates one third each into this three strategies that you have seen, uh, the momentum, the value and the carry. How, it, how, uh, how does it do it? Uh, it's very simple. So nothing changes in the rest of the code. All we do is we define the three signal function that we need. Uh, one is the momentum, one is the valuation, and finally, of course, is the carry. And in the balance uh, rebalance function, we call each one of them sequentially and let them decide their respective weight. And then the final weight is taken as a sum of all the three weights. And uh, this basically uh, gives us a performance of a, a strategy which is uh, one third always invested in each of the risk factors. So mind you here, we are not uh, creating a portfolio where we are statically invested in currency pairs. We are invested in risk factors, which is the next level of sophisticated strategies. This is a, a backtest results. Uh, I'll share all these codes with you. So if you want to run them yourself, you can always do it. So this is about uh, how we can create uh, different strategies with minimal work, starting from a template that does most of the work for us automatically. Now, what about alpha? Of course, uh, that is the most interesting part. Now, before we get into blue shift with alpha, we'll just like to uh, get into a very few uh, pointers and the backgrounds on alpha development. So this is a strategy spectrum I usually uh, share whenever I get a chance. Um, I really like it. It plots the type of strategies, the entire gamut of strategies that you can uh, explore depending on your trading style, which is in the vertical line, whether you are a quant or you are a technical day trader or you are a fundamental trader. And on the horizontal x axis is basically the genesis of your profit, whether it's a trending market or a main reverting market or is a breakout or it's a carry market. Carry market is that nothing is changing. It's a very, very uh, tight and almost flat. And also if there is any event that you are targeting. So typically for uh, AFX, uh, we can trade across the spectrum and it's not necessary that you have to stick with any particular style. Depending on your comfort level, you can trade all three of them together. Uh, of course, Blue Sheet platform is not for fundamental trading. Uh, in the sense, uh, the way people understand fundamental, uh, but if you want to automate your fundamental trading, we can very well use BlueShift platform. So for example, we've already seen uh, example code for value strategies, which is a fundamental uh, risk factor strategy. For trending market, the, typically the quant will look into the momentum type of strategies, the time series and cross-sectional strategies, uh, which we've already discussed. Uh, for a technical person who will uh, probably look into the standard indicators like uh, moving average crossovers or if you are a chart kind of person, then you'll see that you'll try to spot continuation patterns. And uh, on the mean reverting side, uh, quant is basically statistical arbitrage. So any sort of statistical arbitrage, including pair trading, are essentially mean reverting. Uh, so you are punting that the spread between the, the prices of those two assets reverse to the mean. On the technical side, we do swing trading or we follow a retracement pattern or pivot trading also sometime. And the famous tool of fundamental investor, the value investing is actually a main reversion trade. When the price of, a, price of an asset goes beyond its value, you sell or becomes too cheap, you buy, that's assuming that it will mean revert to its actual model valuation. On the breakout, the coins usually use uh, strategies like uh, advanced models, including regime switching or uh, hidden market model. We'll see a very basic regime switching model uh, in the presentation uh, later on. Uh, on the technical, we usually use opening range or dual thrust, those kind of patterns. I'm sure uh, some of you who are already trading in FX regularly, they are very well aware of this kind of strategies. In fundamental, this mostly translates to relative value strategies. On the carry, um, 
typically in technical, it's a range-based short comma strategy for equities. And for Apex, uh, of course, you can go for uh, proper carry strategies by holding your positions overnight. Uh, for quants, uh, it also includes your cash futures arbitrage in case you can do it or uh, market making. Of course, that be uh, becomes the realm of institutional firms, not uh, really retail traders. And uh, finally, on event based, uh, the quant scam is uh, news based automated trading or sentiment analysis based trading. Technical traders really are not into this game. And uh, for the fundamental, this is usually discretionary. Uh, for my understanding, what I think is that the most value you get out of your fundamental trading style is from event best. If you're trading Forex in an event based manner, uh, the best way to trade is to get yourself prepared using uh, whatever is your favorite technical indicator or your statistical method, uh, but developing a thesis on the fundamentals. On the other hand, for all the other four types of source of risks, uh, the quant and technical is usually uh, easier to uh, uh, deploy and probably you'll get a much better confidence. Uh, for systematic strategies, the design cycle looks like this. So you start with the universe selection. We have seen that in the initialized function, we are defining a set of universe. From that universe, you define a single function to generate the signal. As you have seen that we are creating a uh, signal momentum, signal carry, all those are sig signal function. Those signal functions can be independent for each asset in your universe, or they can be a combined uh, signal function that depends on each other. Once you have the signal, then you have to decide your, what should be your target portfolio. And once you have decided your target portfolio, then you send those orders. So that basically uh, the rebalance function. In rebalance, we just send out an API call of order target percent, but all your execution related uh, strategies, for example, how much wide stops you want to do or um, where you want to stand on the bid, or bid and offer, how much standard deviation away you should move your code. All those kind of execution logic should go there. And finally, once you've closed, uh, once you've gone through this to close the loop, you have to analyze the performance and that's a continuous improvement cycle. While we do this, these are the uh, things that we should keep in mind. If I'm, I'm, I apologize if this is not legible. Uh, you will get a copy of the slide so you can go through it later, but um, bear with me meanwhile. So, the first thing to your systematic strategy development is, of course, the inputs. So you have price returns, uh, including your technical indicators, which are basically transformation of the underlying price and volumes. Then you may have position information, uh, which is uh, not always available. And uh, then you have fundamental information like uh, macroeconomic uh, data, which we have on the platform. And then uh, there are some non-market information like Twitter sentiment or um, analyst ratings of sovereigns for FX. Uh, these are this this can be a very very useful uh, data set if you are uh, doing uh, relatively high frequency trading. Uh, then you have to decide your trading rules and logic. The trading rules and logic can can come in two fashions. Uh, in days before AI and ML, it used to be only one. That is, you have to have some sense of the market and you have to have some hypothesis. For example, if the short term moving average crosses the long term, then you expect the market to go up. That is your hypothesis. And based on that, you uh, generate your trading signal. And now, given the uh, advent of uh, machine learning and other artificial intelligence uh, uh, models, we can also do uh, the reverse. So, that is basically we can feed the data to our models and uh, in, uh, instruct the models to give us rules. So the rules are inferred from the data itself rather than starting with some any particular hypothesis. So these are the two major ways of creating trading rules. And then the step comes where you want to validate these trading rules. And that is what backtesting and forward testing are all about. It's a very crucial step. If you're trading live in the market, it's absolutely, absolutely necessary. You need a very good platform to guard against backtesting error. The rookie mistake that happens in backtesting is 
look ahead bias. So at a given point in time, you do not have knowledge of future price, future from that point in time. But since running back test, you already have all the data till today. You often in your code or in your logic somewhere, you make a mistake and that makes the code look ahead in the future and decide the positioning. And that gives a very fantastic sharp value alpha, ultimately, which is not realizable. So this is something that has to be taken care of. The good part is uh, a platform like BlueShift, it is done automatically. So it is an event-driven backtesting platform. That means no matter what you write, no matter what your code is, you are guaranteed not to have a look ahead bias. So if you end up uh, using uh, having a very high sharp ratio or uh, alpha, then probably there are only two possibilities. You've really hit the jackpot or probably you have overfit, uh, overfitted your model. Uh, we'll see uh, more about uh, model of fitting later. And finally, the last part is uh, the creation of the portfolio. So always two strategies are better than one. If you have, uh, especially if you have two uncorrelated strategies, uh, to do this, to uh, uh, produce uh, un un uncorrelated strategy ensemble, uh, the methods that you can follow are, uh, you have options. You can use either the bagging or boosting or a simple average, or you can do a majority poll, or you can even do stacking. So there are various methods. We'll not get into details of this, but uh, this is just to, here just to make sure that you keep them in mind. And finally, there are various methods of risk capital allocation. Uh, one of the popular one is uh, Kelly criteria, uh, which was made popular by 18th, 19th century gamblers, uh, if I'm not wrong. And then of course you have the standard equal weighted or the momentum uh, weighted uh, strategies. Momentum weighted strategies has a much refined version, which is called no regret strategies. Uh, we'll again, not get into details of that. But these are the things that you should keep in mind when we are uh, developing strategies. So our next simple strategy that we'll look into is a very simple one, and uh, it depends on a technical indicator, Bollinger Bands. Uh, I have not included details about Bollinger Bands there. I am assuming uh, most of you are familiar with it. If, if it is not, it's a very simple one. It basically calculates on a trailing basis uh, what is your standard deviation of prices, and then add a one standard deviation on either side of the mid prices and create a band. And uh, naturally you expect your price most of the time to move between the, these two upper and lower bands. So how do you uh, code these strategies? Let's get back. Uh, let me search that strategy is already coded here. Um, again, uh, just as a reminder, if you're looking for this course, it will be shared. Uh, I'll give you the link at the end of the uh, webinar. So this is the strategy. It's a very simple one. There is nothing extra here than what you have seen before, the strategy template. Uh, of course, as you, by now you expect the changes um, to be there in the signal generation function. So here we have uh, this function which is generating the signal. All that is doing is calling a Bollinger Band function, creating the upper, mean, and lower, and computing uh, distance from the upper based on that it is doing some breakout trade. So if it is very close and almost breaking out from the upper band, we assume that it will continue and go farther. On the other hand, if it is lower the uh, uh, lower band or trying to break out from the lower band, we assume that it will indeed do and continue to do that. And this signal function takes in that, calls that calculate signal function, aggregate the weights, and uh, send out the um, and send out the uh, API calls of uh, ordering through the rebalance function that we've already seen. So this is the basic uh, Bollinger Band breakout strategies. If you want to see the backtest, I think I have already opened the backtest somewhere here. So this looks quite uh, impressive. So it's got a 3.123 plus sharp, and uh, it's got a very high 
uh, level of sawtooth ratios. Sawtooth ratios, in case you're wondering, it takes the sharp, it's equivalent to the sharp ratio, but only for the downside cases. Also, one more thing which I like very much is called the stability of the time series is effectively a straight, uh, fitting a straight line from the start and the end of your equity capital. If it is almost a straight line, that means that your strategy is consistently generating returns. If it is, if your strategy returns is coming from one of events and concentrated heavily on particular dates, uh, this will be a low measure. That means your strategy has probably got lucky rather than a consistent strategy. Uh, so this is about um, the ball in demand uh, strategy. We have also similar strategies that I have already uh, developed and uh, as I mentioned, we'll share as well. So for example, we have a strategy a similar strategy based on uh, RSI relative strength index, which is uh, instead of a breakout, it's a momentum, uh, it's a mean revision strategy. The performance of that is also not very bad. Uh, it is lower than uh, what you've seen for the breakout strategy, but it's still impressive. And then we also have the statistical strategy where we are doing uh, we are doing a correlation based uh, momentum trade on uh, on our universe. Uh, just to make sure that we understand uh, that uh, particular strategy, I'll just open and give you a very, very brief on that. Uh, for example, what we are doing here, extra is we are also using this function called before trading start. Why you are using this function is this function is getting used to compute the correlation matrix at the start of each trading day. The logic being that at the start, we create the uh, correlation matrix for that particular day. Then for the rest of the day, you use that correlation matrix and the movement of the individual uh, FX pairs to decide whether you want to go long or short each one of them. So the rest of the things is very similar. We have the calculate signal function. Also, we have the signal function that calls the calculate signal function. And then finally, uh, we, um, coagulate the weights through the rebalance and send out the orders. And also I have created another function which may be useful for a few, uh, another uh, template which is maybe useful for a few of you. Uh, I have named it FX daily. So this basically again uh, takes advantage of the before trading function just to make sure that um, we understand what it is actually meant for. So this strategy uh, at the start of every day, computes a huge number of different types of uh, technical indicators and stored them for the rest of the trading day. So at any time during your, um, when you're reacting to the minute data, then all you have to do is to call those start of the day technical indicators and decide a, a signal based on that, whether you want to go long when both RSI and Bollinger Band are down or whichever combination you like, right? But uh, you can start from this template uh, for anything, right? And then um, the other possibilities that is not shown here is uh, the statistical methods like ARMA or uh, machine learning methods like uh, um, SVM or random forest, which is not in the demo. This is also a possibility. Uh, this is something that can also be done on blue shift. And then finally, we have ensemble methods. So ensemble methods, we have also uh, discussed briefly, very briefly a bit before. That's basically running multiple strategies and taking a average of that based on either arithmetic average or majority polling. We have already seen a ensemble strategy, which was a fact factor basket where we are doing an arithmetic average of three underlying factors. Now, having uh, seen all these strategies, uh, what we need to understand is that when we actually go through developing these strategies, what are the pitfalls we should be aware of? So, here comes the question of backtesting optimization. The scientific way of doing uh, developing a strategy is uh, to create with, uh, to start with an idea, then develop hypothesis based on your research, and then test those hypotheses either through backtesting or other methods. And then if it works, then deploy. If it doesn't, then you start over. But uh, most of us, including me, more, more often than not, where we end up is the cycle on your right hand side where 
we start with an idea, we try to evaluate, it doesn't work. We change some parameters, which we call optimize. And then we try to deploy it and only to find out that actually it was very good in your back testing period. And then in life, in live trading, it breaks down. And that is the pitfall of uh, backtesting optimization. We really do not want to optimize our backtesting performance. What we want to optimize is our forward-looking actual live performance. And that is why we need to be aware of this. So when you are measuring and when you are uh, generating and uh, trying to optimize your backtesting, what effectively you are doing is based on a small set of variations of your underlying hypothesis, you are generating a number of different models. It can go up to 10 or even hundreds. I have run a few simulation based on how your actual effective sharp ratio goes down depending on the number of models, number of times to optimize your backtest happens. So for example, if your uh, model is based on a pure uh, a pure hypothesis, a solid hypothesis, and you actually do a backtest and you see that your sharp ratio is two, then probably that is something you can actually realize in your live trading. But if you have overdone your opt uh, parameter optimization and you've reached a sharp ratio of two, then in case it is a thousand times of iteration, then it can go down to as low as 50.50. And that is almost a three-fourth reduction. And even for lower sharp strategies, it can be negative uh, in effectively in uh, live trading. So what are the options of um, getting away from this problem? Personally, I do not like optimization on backtest. Uh, also in blue shift, uh, we do not at present have a sweep kind of um, mechanism where you can actually sweep your parameters and run uh, the same backtest on different input parameters. We're, uh, we're considering adding that features, but irrespective of that, I do not like uh, that kind of optimization. What I rather suggest is uh, the four options that are listed below. One is, we, act, we go for some sort of uh, adaptive strategies. What's, what are adaptive strategies? The strategies that react to the market changes. So for example, if you're trading Euro USD during some periods, the Euro USD can be in momentum and during some other period, it can be in a main revision mode in a range bound market. So it is far better to optimize, uh, it, it's far worse to optimize some 10 different indicators to figure out which is which than to actually go for a statistical solution. What sort of statistical solution? Let's take an example. So this example I'm giving is a very, very basic one. So I have created a strategy called regime switching. What I'm doing is that in this case, I'm again using the before trading start and I'm tracking, I'm tracking my PNLs in this uh, particular function. And whenever that PNL is statistically changing its direction, I am just flipping my strategy. So for example, if I'm in a momentum trade and I suddenly see that my PNL has started getting negative, my conclusion is that there is a statistically high chance uh, the market has shifted to a mean reverting regime. So what I do is that, what I do is that I flip my signal. So naturally, my momentum momentum strategy now suddenly becomes a mean reversion strategy. This is done through a method called change point analysis. Those who those of you who are not familiar with change point analysis, uh, this is something that are used across uh, different applications. So for example. Um, so huge internet providers, so for example, use change point analysis to see the real time load on their system and uh, and adjust to that, react to that. So this is one way of doing it. There are many other advanced methods. So for example, we can use something called hidden markup model, which is also possible on Blue Shift platform uh, to track the changes and statistically decide whether we should flip our strategies or continue with the current one. And if you see the backtest performance, you see that the naive strategy which is always going for a particular direction, 
gives a minus 11% cumulative returns with a very low sharp. And it's a very basic improvement of change point makes that 11% to 21%. So it's almost a 32% jump. And uh, the sharp ratio also improves to 0.34. So that's a huge uh, improvement for a strategy which is um, which is based on a very basic uh, statistical method. So these are the some sort of method that we can do to uh, improve our backtest instead of depending on parameter optimization. The other method that we can do is um, we can do a stable factor research. So for example, uh, the factors that are proven theoretically and uh, empirically to provide stable and uh, consistent returns we can uh, try to extract those factors, isolate those factors in terms of trading instruments, and uh, then uh, develop strategies around them. For example, momentum is a, such a factor. It has been proven to empirically and also with a solid theory behind it that it should work and why it, why it should work. And uh, momentum is a very good trading strategy in, in any, any market, uh, apart from the few momentum crashes that is seen from uh, time to time. And uh, then, of course, you can improve your backtest instead of parameter optimization. You can use ensemble strategies. We've talked about a lot about ensemble strategies. I'm not going to report, uh, repeat. And then finally, we have this uh, validation technique, uh, the standard one being the cross-validation. Now, the problem of cross-validation in uh, FX market, in or for that matter, in any market, is uh, the cross validation really breaks down the continuity of the time series. You cannot really uh, taste uh, your strategy based on some random sample and then uh, taste that strategy from another set of random samples because your strategy will be dependent on some indicators, some signals which are continuous in time. The other option is to break them in continuous chunks. So for example, the first 60%, you develop your model, next 40%, you validate your model. That is also a problem because as you know, uh, the only thing that is um, true for financial market is that they always keep changing. Uh, so if you see that your backtester strategy was not validated, it failed the validation, that can mean two things. One, you had a, wrong backtest or your backtest well, your strategy was not good enough or two your strategy was good in the period of tasting a uh, period of training actually but then the market changed and the underlying relation broke down in the testing phase right so it's very difficult to actually uh, determine which is which um, of course, it means your aim to generate a strategy that works under any condition but uh, that is kind of a Holy Grail, uh, it is highly unlikely that uh, you will have, uh, you will come up with such strategies. Even even the top ones, they sometimes go through uh, these phases when all their strategies just simply don't work. What we can do instead is, uh, again, one of my favorite uh, way around this is, you run your back test for your full data set. Uh, no need to break it up in uh, test and uh, train. Uh, but what you do is you count the number of uh, signals that were generated and the uh, number of uh, signals as well as the duration for each trade. And then based on that uh, distribution, the timing of the trades and the duration of the trades, you randomize another set of signals, simply generate from a random distribution that uh, matches that distribution and do buy sales again based on those signals. So. If your backtest performs significantly better than those random signals, that means your backtest is probably have a very good chance of being a genuine one. So this, I think, is uh, one of the better way of uh, testing your uh, backtesting uh, strategies, how robust it is. And finally, uh, about automating your uh, strategies, one thing we need to understand that automation is not a black box. It's, it's, it's a very wrong way of treating automation of a black box, whether you are the one who is developing strategies or you are the one who is looking for automated strategies, do not uh, take an automated strategy as a black box. You, you should and ideally you should be able to answer questions like, what are the underlying factors that are driving the PNL? Uh, if the market, if the U US market opens 
1% down or 5% up tomorrow, what you expect from your strategy, how it should react. And it should be, of course, as close to the reality as possible. Then again, it's not a risk-free profit. There is no free lunch. And uh, we should understand that what are the underlying risks we are taking with each of the strategies. So for example, we have seen that uh, the momentum strategy, we are taking the underlying risk of momentum, which uh, basically make us pay during uh, some uh, rare momentum crash, as well as uh, some other risk factors. And also systematic strategies are not fire and forget. We have seen that development cycle. You have always to analyze uh, the system uh, outputs and the trades and the performance, and you always have to constantly be on your toes to adapt to the changing market conditions. And finally, uh, systematic strategy is not about man versus machine. It's rather man and machine. So human brain is far better uh, evolved to develop hypotheses, and machines are far better and much faster to taste those hypotheses. So you should uh, basically try to leverage both of them. Finally, uh, a parting words about the strategy development. If you're using the Blueship platform, uh, there's a, there are a few recommendations to follow. One is use all your strategy parameters and related variables in the context environment. Why? Because this gives everything at a uh, same place, at a central place. And also, uh, when you go live, if you are restarting strategies, it's very easy to uh, store the state of your algorithm and restart properly without any loss of information. Second, uh, use schedule function if your algo doesn't really need to respond to every bar. So for example, if you're uh, trying to develop a daily strategy or weekly strategy, you do not need handle data. And if you use schedule function to schedule a function weekly or daily, your strategy will run much faster. Also, always check out your account leverage when you are developing strategies because uh, that gives you, that is probably the first uh, indicator that there is something going wrong in your strategy. If you see that it is exploding or it is not trading any uh, at all. Finally, uh, check the, we already discussed the overfitting point and finally, uh, always check the backtest results. Uh, we have uh, lots of information on the, a results page and they are there for a reason. So statute, low sharp, your concentrated wins and large downside risks. These are the kind of strategies that you really, you really cannot trust your money with. So you have to cross those thresholds and then you have to understand your uh, strategies, the underlying risk factors and the logic and then uh, you are good to go. This is a list of demo strategies that we have in our uh, Quantity GitHub accounts. Uh, these are specific for FX. Do check out uh, some equity strategies there as well in the same repo. Uh, these are the strategy uh, list of strategies that we have. We already discussed most of them. A few we haven't. Uh, please go through them. Try to run them on the platform. In case you uh, fail, uh, please reach out to uh, reach out to us at uh, blueship support at quantity.com. The next step, if you are already an experienced FX trader, I think uh, this has been a uh, good enough introduction to the BlueShip platform. Please go ahead and try to make use of it as much as you can or want to. And in case you need more information about uh, FX markets or strategies or anything else, you are always free to write to us. Uh, the mail I mentioned, uh, BlueShip support at coininst.com. Or you can also enroll for one of our free course. Uh, this is uh, free to join, uh, no charge for this. And uh, finally, uh, we conclude the webinar here and we'll uh, move on to uh, Lee's from uh, FXCM uh, for his inputs. Hi everyone, this is Liza from FXCM. Um, I just wanted to reach out to you to let you know that FXCM is uh, here to help you with any questions that you have about the FX market data. 
Um, we are available for you to email us. The email address is algotrading at fxcm.com. Um, FXCM does have uh, free data. We have free access to our APIs um, and much more. So you can find out about that on our website, which is fxcm.com. Um, I did see a um, brief question earlier regarding tick data history. Um, so at this time, we uh, do have Minute data um, integrated with the BlueShift platform. Um, if you're looking to access historical tick data, uh, we do have that information available. If you reach out to us at algotrading at fxcm.com, um, we're happy to point you in the right direction. Um, if there are any further questions, uh, I'm happy to take those. Um, but again, thank you to Quant and C for uh, this great informative session. Uh, thanks, Lisa. Uh, so, hello everyone, uh, this is uh, back from me and we'll take up the questions right now. Uh, just give us a second here uh, to go through them. Uh, we'll start, unfortunately, in a LIFO manner, last in, first out. Uh, will this session be recorded? Yes, it will be recorded and shared. Uh, can you trade via BlueShip right now? No. Right now, we are not connected to any live market, but uh, please watch out. We'll um will soon be uh, then uh, kindly uh, please do share the recording yes we've already uh, talked about it uh just allow me a moment to go through the questions we are uh we'll try to cover as much as possible Uh, hope will be sharing the slides. Yes, I'll be sharing the slides. Uh, um, I think uh, this next question is already answered. Uh, will you be talking shortly about your platform and strategy testing? Uh, this is already answered. Do you have uh, concluded the uh, talk? Uh, do you have access to crypto market like Kraken? Uh, no. Uh, right now, the only asset classes we are covering is uh, US equity market, NYC, Indian equity and futures market, NSC, and uh, top 10 currencies uh, through FXCM. Uh, we have a plan to go to crypto uh, pretty soon, but again, uh, that will be for data and strategy development. Uh, the trading live will uh, take a while. Uh, can you use the same in equity market? I'm not very sure about uh, what you mean by same. Uh, can you use the same platform for equity market? Yes, we already have equity market data set. If you are talking about strategies, we have a separate straight, uh, set of strategies for equity market. You will find in the same link that I've provided on GitHub. Uh, can one step through this code with breakpoints? Uh, no. So at present, uh, we do not have a very good uh, debugging uh, facility here. But uh, of course, you can use uh, the basic debugging that you used to do in high school using print statement. Uh, we are working on a better debugger. Uh, the another question is, uh, can we use VWAP, uh, which I think is work? Uh, unfortunately, uh, the data that you are getting from FXCM uh, doesn't have the liquidity available volume data. So uh, there is a volume data which is approximated, but if uh, that is more like uh, the traded volume at that tick, it doesn't reflect the liquidity available at that tick. So you can compute VWAP, of course, but um, 
I I'm I'm doubtful that it will be very useful in case you uh, manage to code that strategy and uh, get a good results. Please uh, let me know. I'll be very much interested in knowing that. Uh, the next one, uh, I think we have lots of complaints about quick poll. I keep that in mind in my next webinar. Uh, I, I'm really, I really apologize for the distraction it caused. Uh, the others are mostly about the recordings and the sharing of the slides. The answer is yes and yes. Um, uh, Python doesn't let me get zipline or talib. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what you meant by that, but uh, uh, if if you can uh, put us a query with more details, we'll be happy to address to that. Uh, pip install zipline gives an error. Uh, probably you should consult the zipline documentation. Uh, you don't need to install zipline uh, separately. This platform already have zipline installed, so you can uh, pretty well go ahead and use it. Uh, in uh, do you really have a period of time uh, on tick data history that is able to co cover all different market types available to be used for back testing? Uh, the answer is probably no. Uh, if you see that, uh, the reason is that FX market is not just about what's happening in the FX market, but also very closely linked to uh, macroeconomy, uh, especially the rates market. So if you are talking about uh, extreme crisis, like 2008, we have data from 2008. So that is a very different period where the rates were very different than what we had, say for example, in another crisis, uh, say in 2015, or if you call that a crisis, or that big move during the Suisse or the big move in Yuan in uh, July 2015. So, in a nutshell, it's very difficult to find a small amount of uh, time history that will cover all the expected market moves. Uh, you can have that in equities because uh, there are cases in equities which are which you can justify by saying that business cycles are this long. So if I get uh, my data set slightly more than a business cycle, I'll probably cover the entire market because equity is usually less sensitive to macro but in fx it is so sen sensitive to macro data that uh, unless you can really say that i have a business cycle in macro which many people will argue they don't in that case you cannot really have a uh, data set that is representative Uh, do we have tick data or uh, M1? We have M1. It's minute data. It's not tick data. It is tick data uh, combined into minute candle. Can I suggest any book for beginners to get started? Uh, unfortunately, I'll not be able to suggest a book because I never learned from a book for a beginner. Uh, my background is in uh, banking, so I mostly learned the hard way. But I believe there are good amount of uh, blogs and uh, and research articles that get published on um, on uh, FX. Uh, this which is a very which is always very good read. So, for example, you can start following the the research articles from uh, the central bank, the Fed, and also the BIS, the, uh, the central bank of central banks, and also the IMF, uh, especially their foreign currency oriented uh, reports. They will be a very good starting point for beginners. 
Uh, do we have any data for INR? No, unfortunately, we do not have any data, uh, any data for INR. Uh, can you do a forward testing on a uh, demo account with FXCM via BlueShift? Uh, unfortunately, we do not have any forward, uh, forward testing or paper trading or live trading, but uh, it will soon be available and then uh, we'll definitely be able to do it. Uh, will there be any uh, webinar on high frequency trading? Uh, I'm not sure whether, uh, what is the frequency you say high frequency? High frequency trading is typically sending thousand orders or more for per second. And uh, that kind of uh, trading volume is usually not very sustainable for a retail trader like you and me. But uh, I'll definitely give this feedback to both um, FXCM and Quan Institute team here in case they can arrange something that is suitable. Uh, compression of in-sample and out-of-sample backtesting, I think we, I covered this in a, at length. Uh, I don't believe in doing in-sample and out-of-sample testing because the market changes and because the continuity is broken. What I suggest is that uh, we do randomized testing that is uh, the way I uh, explained generate the signals random manner but following the pattern of your back testing the distribution of your back testing signals in terms of the number of signals and also the duration of the uh, trades held and then uh, that can give you a very good idea about the alpha in your back test is factor based investing good for non technical person Factor-based investing is a very popular investing uh, method right now. Uh, one of the, uh, there are two major risks I can see. One is uh, overcrowding. So if everyone gets into a factor and then everyone try to exit at the same, same time, it can create some uh, disturbance in the market and uh, it can uh, harm a portfolio based on factor investing. The second thing is that the factors are not alpha. The factors are beta which means that sometimes the factors will work, sometimes it will not work. So if you are getting into a cycle where the factors are not working, for example, you are trading momentum in a range bound market, then uh, the portfolio will suffer as well. So is factor-based investing is good for a non-technical person from a very long-term point of view? Yes, it is good. If you're talking about short-term or medium-term uh, horizon, then probably you can do better. How far back we have history for uh, the data? I think uh, I've already answered this since 2008 from current. Does one need to have a stats background? Uh, not really. So as I said that you can be many different uh, sorts of traders uh, at the same time, fundamental or technical or quant. If you are only focused on quant trading, then yes, you need to have some uh, stats understanding. If you are uh, only trading uh, technical, then you have, you do not need any solid background in stats, but uh, an understanding always helps. And in case of fundamental, uh, there is really not much need. Can we add additional Python libraries? Yes, we can. Uh, if you go to our uh, uh, we have a set of Python libraries which are mostly used for any sort of um, uh, quantitative analysis like NumPy, SciPy, and Pandas and all those kind of things. In case you have uh, seen a need for a package which is not available, please uh, drop us a line. We'll evaluate that package for security and we'll add it. Uh, to understand the examples shown in the webinar, uh, do we need to be an expert in Python? The answer is no. The entire point of BlueShift is that you, you focus on strategy development rather than being an expert in Python. So if you just uh, get the strategy code from the GitHub and copy paste them in the code window and hit run, it will run. Now, do you need to be an expert in understanding logic? Yes, that is where uh, your effort will come in. You have to understand that if you have basic idea of Python, you will be able to go through the code. You may not write, be able to write the code from scratch. That's why we are starting from templates, not from scratch. 
Uh, but if but you do need some basic idea of Python to go through the code and understand what the code is trying to achieve, and see that if it is indeed doing any good. Are there any built-in functions for uh, resampling for 15 minute one hour data? Uh, unfortunately, the answer is still no. So there are two kind of candles we are storing right now. One is minute data and one is daily data. Uh, usually the resampling uh, has some problems. The problems are that uh, resampling is not a very efficient uh, method. So if you are calling resampling in a minute loop, it will be a very, very uh, CPU intensive uh, workload. Uh, so we really do not recommend that you do a very high frequency resampling calls. And the second thing about resampling is that the way it is implemented in pandas, uh, for example, data frame dot resample, it's not a very, uh, I'd rather say it's not a very, a convenient way for the particular use case that we have. So there can be some misalignment of the timestamps. So the best case for us to provide a resampling is to create those resamples and store them in database uh, and give them as a ready-made output rather than uh, create a, a resampling library so that you can do it on the fly. It is not efficient. Uh, price action strategies, do you have price action strategies? So basically for price action strategies to develop any design thing, you have to have uh, at least a level two or even higher sort of data. It's not just uh, enough to have uh, open, high, low, close and volume data. Uh, this is what you have. So I don't think that uh, we are going to be able to provide uh, price action strategies anytime soon. Uh, that will uh, entail create a much bigger and richer data set than we have. Can we import TensorFlow and Keras? Keras and TensorFlow, uh, not right now, but you can use uh, scikit-learn and uh, other similar libraries. Keras, uh, we'll, we can look into it if, if you have enough requests. Is it legal to trade currency pairs apart from the four available in MCX? Uh, uh, there are a few pairs available in NSE as well. Yes, if you are trading on exchange, those are the only options. If you are trading currencies as uh, uh, apart from exchange from an OTC market, you have to, I'm not an expert in regulation, but as far as my knowledge goes, you have to have a uh, validation why you want to uh, trade those currencies. That is either for investment or for hedging purpose. If it is for hedging purpose, you have to actually uh, produce if demanded uh, the proofs, for example, your invoices from overseas and etc. Are there any limits to the number of uh, backtests that one can run in a day on Blue Ship? No, there is no limit, but uh, uh, if you run too many backtests, so obviously uh, there is a chance that the system will slow down and the performance will degrade. Are there any built-in function for Kaley criteria? Uh, actually, for Kaley criteria, uh, if you assume normality, there is not much need for a built-in function. It's simply your expected return, or you might say expected excess return, uh, divided by the variance. Instead of uh, vol, which we use for sharp, you just have to divide it by variance. And uh, you uh, basically allocate uh, uh, capital based on the ratio of Kelly criteria. Uh, so there is, I don't see uh, there is uh, a need for a built-in function, but of course uh, we can look into it. Is there any grouping system in uh, history tick data that can categorize all different strategy needed? So uh, no, unfortunately. Um, so for this, what we need is basically a sort of a folder-like structure on BlueShift for our users, where users have their own workspace and they can uh, arrange stuff depending on how they uh, want to categorize their strategies. The only categorization right now is through the tags that you have seen on the description tab. Uh, but this is something that uh, we'll definitely look into the future. Uh, do you have any other questions uh, coming along, either for me or uh, for FXM? You can reach out to 
their uh, email address shared and for me you can type in uh, for a few more minutes or you can always at any time uh, reach us at uh, blue ship support at coinsty.com uh, there is one last question i'll just take uh, can an at-home trader based in india legally trade in fx except inr best pairs uh, so i'm not a legal expert in this manner uh, i think uh, you should be able to trade FX if you have a legit reason, for example, either for your investment or for hedging, but not as a uh, not as a uh, as a trader. But I'm not an expert, so you need to get it validated from an expert. Uh, I think that is the last last questions I've taken. Uh, so thank you everyone for participating. Please uh, go through the GitHub link and uh, uh, see the strategies, pick up them and uh, try it out on uh, BlueShift platform. In case you have any questions, Richard's at uh, BlueShift support at uh, BlueShift hyphen support at uh, coinsty.com. And uh, also for anything related to FXCM uh, specific, uh, please reach out to them at the email address shared by them. Thanks again. Uh, we close the webinar now.